because that's a basic uh, precept of Hawaiian beliefs. That is that you come into the world perfect. You are not born with guilt that needs to be assuaged. You are perfect. And what your job is, is to uncover your greatness, to explore your greatness, to nurture your greatness, and to protect your greatness. So once you've done all of that, you have to believe in your greatness and have the strength and the vision to bring it to full expression. So that is the goal, self-actualization. So I want to talk a little bit about the history of the Hawaiian Islands because I think there's a lot of confusion because we all, you know, the contemporary Hawaiians, you know, all greet us with the warm aloha spirit. They talk to us about, you know, the ohana, uh, the bringing you into the ohana, the extended family, where no child goes unloved, where everyone is treated equally, you know, egalitarian and loving and, you know, that there's a tremendous amount of acceptance and the family was the centerpiece and the elders were respected. But in, from 350 to 1250, that was the case, the Ahana rule, the family rule, and that is the genesis of the Aloha spirit. But in 1250, there was a sweep, a Polynesian sweep from Tahiti and some made it to Hawaii and some made it to New Zealand, and they both have the same rootstock. Hmm. Same with the Cook Islands, which is my next destination. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because they all tie together. And when they came, when the Polynesian voyagers came from Tahiti, they brought eggs, they brought chickens, they brought stowaway rats, and they brought the 2,000-year-old Polynesian capto system. And this was a very harsh system with a very uh, striated society. They had Alihi, the royals, the commoners, and the slaves. They had slaves, which I found to be interesting. Uh, with, because definitely not everyone was treated equally. In fact, the slaves were untouchables and couldn't participate in anything in society and were often used for human sacrifice because they also, Chief Pao, when he arrived in 1250, introduced human sacrifice to the god Ku, who is the war god. And he uh, sacrificed about 1,100 Hawaiians to prove his point. And he established, and the priests then continued to enforce the 2,000-year-old Polynesian capitalist system. Very harsh penalties, very strict society, okay? So this is a contradiction in terms that I was like, how could this be, you know, this Aloha spirit and what is this? How does this happen, you know? So I got, uh, it, I, I needed to know more about it. So um, I wanted to, when I graduated from CSUN here at Northridge University, by the way, <laughs> I graduated with an English degree. And um, I didn't I really know what to do with, with my life at that point. And I, you know, I, I didn't know if I had the goods to be a writer, and I didn't really want to be a teacher because I didn't think I would fit into academia. I figured I would be fired in about a year, and I would have gone through a lot of trouble, and I would lose <laughs> my So I think I was pretty accurate about that, but that left me with, what am I going to do with my life? So what I did was I dropped out for a year, and I dropped in to the North Shore of Hawaii. Mm, love it up there. And I lived on the North Shore of Hawaii yeah. in 1978. Wow. And 1978, yeah, was the most blissful year of my life. I'll bet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't work. Uh, you know, I, I had a, rented a room for $133 a month on mm. the North Shore. And I, you know, my biggest decision was which beach I was going to go to, you know, and uh, which book I was going to read. And in that time, I wrote what was arguably the worst screenplay in the history of God. But I liked the process. And I, I knew that I, I wanted to be a writer, that I wanted to write, that I wanted to give it my best shot. 
um, you know, after my year in the islands, I came back to the mainland, obviously. But at any rate, while I was there, it was the bicentennial year of the landing of Captain James Cook. And he landed on Kauai first in 1978. And then he went to Alaska. He took a couple of Hawaiians with him who were very uncomfortable up there in the cold. And then he came back to the islands in 1779. So what does this have to do with Wainai and Kahumanu? Well, I saw her as, she was inspirational to me because she was the favorite wife of Kamehameha the Great who had 32 wives and she was a childless bride. And this was really unusual. In history, usually women are only notable for who they gave birth to or who they married. But she didn't have children, but she was very she was very intelligent. She was brave. She was athletic, very athletic, strong, passionate, caring, and a centered human being. And I saw her as a role model and a forerunner to the modern woman. So she became the inspiration for my character, Wainani. And I took a job at the cub reporter as a cub reporter at the Garden Isle. So this gave me the opportunity to run around and interview whoever I wanted on the island. And um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah.